Hello there, Dello Felegates. Welcome back to the Scientific Pros. As a tribute to Star Wars Day, which is today, May the 4th, we decided to make a special science video for this channel. Lightsabers are one of the coolest weapons used in science fiction and part of Star Wars. So this video shall cover and explore the possibilities of constructing a real working lightsaber. Let's get into the science of lightsabers. In order to find out whether or not they can actually be possible, we need to take a look at a few factors which are iconic to these weapons. Heat, portability along with their power, color of the blade and sound. We also need to learn the laws and concepts of physics and chemistry which keep them within this reality. So first off, we might not be able to replicate all the factors lightsabers are characterized by, so we will be dealing with equivalents here. Lightsabers burn at temperatures thousands of degrees in the Celsius scale. And that's what makes them capable enough to cut through different materials as if they were butter or sodium. The force at which they are swung seems to add little effect, it only adds precision. After all, these weapons aren't swords. It will take an immense amount of heat energy to cut through materials like steel and organic matter within seconds. The reason lightsabers cut is due to the temperature of the blade. Temperature is basically the concentration of heat energy in a particular area, the blade in this case. And the particles within a lightsaber blade move around a lot. They have a lot of kinetic energy. So if they want to come in contact with a material, the lightsaber beam's particles shall collide with the material's particles, which in turn raises the material's kinetic energy, hence increasing temperature, which cuts the said material. You could use substances which have a high enough temperature or high heat conductivity for a real lightsaber blade. The highest temperature we have ever created was within the sword super collider, which is of a video of its own, which formed the plasma of quarks and gluons, which reached up to trillions of degrees. The only thing is that super colliders take up an entire room and a lot of effort in order to create and sustain this temperature, which brings us to the next factor, portability and power. You can't exactly have unlimited power within a lightsaber. You need to be able to store and concentrate a lightsaber's heat as well as its light within a hilt which is a foot or a couple feet in length. Here's where we get to more limitations. One example of this is with heat transfers. If you focus a lightsaber blade into a very thin beam, it can cut through things much faster as heat energy is concentrated. Kind of like how knives cut better than steel blocks due to pressure being applied with a minimal amount of area. The issue with lightsaber blades is that they are 2 or 3 centimeters thick and hence would require a lot of heat to counter this thickness. Here, the amount of heat energy divided by the thickness of the blade results in the cutting speed. If we increase the numerator of the fraction here, the fraction increases. But if the denominator, the thickness, is increased, the cutting speed gets slower as the fraction is divided into more parts. Another example of this is with the laws of thermodynamics. We'll cover all of these laws in a future video, but for now, the second law of thermodynamics needs to be taken into the picture here. So how do we pack in so many joules of energy within just a foot long hilt? If you manage to even do so, the energy would surpass that of a nuclear reactor and it will be extremely dangerous to wield. As a result, we need safer options for the lightsaber's wielder. First off, instead of concentrating all this energy within just the hilt, a power pack could be added. Such a thing does exist in the Star Wars universe, in its lore, before traditional lightsabers, the protosabers. These seem more realistic than their modern counterparts, so let's take it from there. Now that more energy can be used and it will be less concentrated, let's get to Lightsaber blades need to be able to deflect lasers, cut through stuff and bounce off each other in a duel. That's how you get epic stuff such as this. With this, we'll also get into the different methods of building a real lightsaber. The first method I could think of was plasma. Plasma is basically the fourth state of matter and is found when gases are put under a lot of heat energy which ionizes them. Atoms within solids, liquids and gases have a structure like this. They are electrons orbit the atomic nucleus via electromagnetic forces which get weaker due to heat. If the right amount of heat is applied to a gas which are already having high amounts of its energy, the element's electrons get stripped away from the nucleus. I have explained this in our separate video about plasma. Because electromagnetic forces make plasma what it actually is, a plasma beam can actually be regulated via magnetic forces. So you could basically add a magnetic field to plasma in order to regulate it. 
We'll make a separate video on how magnets work in the future. These magnetic fields also prevent radiation of heat from the lightsaber's blade onto the user's hand, preventing themselves from burning. And also thankfully, plasma does not radiate a lot of heat. Fire is an example of plasma. If you use a flame of, for example, propane and regulate it using gas nozzles, you would have a temperature of approximately 2200 degrees Celsius. At such a temperature, the lightsaber would be able to cut through stuff like steel, which has a melting point of less than 1600 degrees Celsius, wood, and it could burn through organic matter. The only thing is it would take a little bit of time. And since it's a flame, air resistance can tend to change the length of the flame projection. And yes, I use the Hacksmith Industries lightsaber for reference. The cool thing about plasma-based lightsabers is that the color can easily be regulated. Burning different substances will result in differently colored flames. For instance, sodium burns yellow, plasmic barium burns green, potassium and its salts burn a rare purple, and plasmic strontium burns the red of Darksiders lightsabers. That's freaking cool. A disadvantage of plasma-based lightsabers is dueling. Flames will not bounce past each other if two of such weapons clash, and that kind of kills what lightsabers are meant to do. But there is a solution which I shall explain later in the video. There is a method which might possibly solve this issue of lightsaber blades clashing against each other. Gamma-based blades. Light behaves both like a wave and a particle, and is propagated as electromagnetic waves. If you look at the structure of these waves, they have crests, and the distance between such crests is known as its wavelength. On the far side of the electromagnetic spectrum, beyond visible purple, you have light beams of high intensity. Wavelengths less than 100 picometers, distances which are actually trillions of a meter, are known as gamma rays. Photons within gamma rays move at extremely high speeds as they have a lot of energy. Also, high intensities of light are capable of cutting. Using a phenomenon known as gamma scattering, photons could bounce off of each other. But there is a catch. There are low probabilities that a couple photons can bounce off of each other, let alone thousands and millions of them in a lightsaber blade. And also the energy required to form gamma rays isn't exactly super portable. And also gamma radiation is harmful to us weak humans. Well then, how about lasers? Lightsabers after all are called laser swords by some. Lasers are concentrated beams of light, which with the right amount of concentration are capable of precisely cutting through materials very quickly. If we line the somewhat cylindrical hilt of a lightsaber with many of these lasers, they could form a thick enough beam collectively. The only thing is that laser light travels infinitely. To make the beam a meter long, we must reflect it using a one meter long metal rod with a mirror at the end of it. And that isn't super practical either. Now we come back to plasma. As I'd explained, the disadvantage of using plasma-based lightsabers is that the beam bends due to air resistance and you cannot duel properly. You can with a core. This core needs to be long enough, in this case a meter long, and should be able to withstand the temperatures and forces when the blades clash together. So I had my own idea about this. How about we combine the material with the highest melting point with the strongest one? Tungsten has the highest melting point of any metal in the periodic table of elements. Check out my video on all these elements over here. Diamond is one of the strongest materials. It is an allotrope of carbon with a tetrahedral molecular structure which gives it its strength. Also, diamond has a higher melting point than tungsten metal, although carbon is non-metallic, which makes this compound more practical for use, right? If we combine tungsten and diamond, essentially carbon, we get a compound known as tungsten carbide. This shall give you a compound with a melting point of approximately 2870 degrees Celsius along with great hardness, low malleability, so it won't bend if we clash our sabers, and a great tensile strength of a whopping 344 megapascals. So if we have a ring of hot plasma gas with a retractable blade of tungsten carbide, can we get the perfect lightsaber equivalent? Well, no. Tungsten carbide can be highly explosive, dangerous for the wielder. So many catches, am I right? But if we coat the tungsten carbide with a less reactive material, that might possibly be it. I mean, we already do this to iron to prevent it from oxidizing. This is known as galvanization, by the way. This is purely my idea though. So I might be wrong about some aspects of my tungsten carbide lightsaber. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Okay, so we could technically have a retractable lightsaber blade made of other materials. You just need to be able to construct it such that the blade can retract within the lightsaber's hilt and extend the desired length with the press of a button. 
The length of the plasma can be regulated via magnets and or valves by a portable computer like device connected to the power pack which produces it. Yeah, the classic ignition, clashing and cutting sounds of a lightsaber would be compromised for all the lightsabers mentioned in the video. So that brings us to the final question. Can lightsabers exist? Are they actually possible in real life? The short answer is no if you want them to be exactly the way they are in Star Wars with current technology, but we can have equivalents, but with sacrifices to all the factors like temperature, portability, and sound. Let's hope that one day they can properly be made possible. With that, be sure to like, comment, and share this video if it was entertaining and informative to you guys. And by the way, 91% of you guys aren't subscribed. So Do it. if you like scientific content like this, May the force be with you all and stay scientific.